we went into a guitar store and just kind of picked up a guitar and amp. It's sometimes like an instrument will just dictate where you go and just instantly just played this. Anyway, I kind of liked it. So afterwards, I was going over to uh, a songwriting buddy of mine, uh, Will Krauss, was going over to his house and just kind of sit down and talk about songs and go over stuff. And, you know, I picked up one of his acoustics and played that same thing and really wasn't thinking much of it. And he was like, hey, what is that? And just by him going, hey, what is that? Hey, that's kind of cool. Uh, we sat there and kind of within an hour knocked this song out. So did that. I went home and uh, did this demo. Then I kind of had an idea of just, I think I added a djembe. So trying to pick the guitar for the riff, we had, uh, I kind of have notes here. We went through a bunch of different guitars. We had a Green Schecter uh, PT Fastback guitar that I use a lot. And um, I kind of thought that was going to be it. But the notes we kind of have is it was bassier, kind of more of like a Chris Isaac tone. And it was good, but it just, we tried out another guitar that I had that I haven't used a lot yet. Merle Haggard Tough Dog Telly. And the notes I have on that one was that it was more of a Tarantino you know, Quentin Tarantino movie sound and like a clean spaghetti Western. Going back to the cinematic element of, of this, uh, that was kind of the way we ended up going, uh, picking between the two guitars. I just felt like it was more of a unique sound. So that's the one that we went with. Now as the song goes on, because it's a super clean guitar, no, not a lot of distortion, I doubled the guitar play the guitar again, and crank the amp up a little bit. So here's just the dirty guitar. Played at the same time as the clean one. The two of them mixed together. Kind of still made it a little bigger as the song went on, but didn't really take away from that, that clean sound that it that kind of made it good. When we were doing the record and finishing it up, this was one of the songs that I was kind of thinking of putting it on, but we didn't have it uh, fully recorded. I talked to James Brock, who is a fantastic drummer in town, as well as a uh, percussionist. He does a lot of world percussion and has traveled all over doing that. And I had asked him if he would be interested, you know, take a listen to the song and would you be interested in adding percussion to it? You know, maybe a djembe or something, you know, just something. And uh, we had talked about that maybe a year ago. He said, sure, and he kind of worked on it. And then um, when the quarantine and everything happened and we were going to put this record out, I reached out to James Brock and said, hey, you know, would, would you be able to send that, uh, finish that up and send that to me since we couldn't book a session to record it? And this is what he did in his home studio. And it just sounds so good. So, I mean, he's got so many different things going on. And he just created this, this great atmosphere for everything. And so, um, you know, once I had that, you know, kind of same thing, I reached out to Joe Riddle and asked, hey, do you have some time to maybe, you know, add a bass track to this? And then just instantly. He's so good at getting this kind of very dirty, rattly sound, and that just kind of adds this element to the percussion. So this kind of groove track goes with anything. And then I added this, I was really happy with this, to kind of still get that spaghetti western flair, this little guitar. I kind of wanted a real like cinematic feel out of the rhythm track. So it's like you could take everything else away and this could just, you know, be out of some, you know, 60s Clint Eastwood 
you know, any more kind of, kind of feel. And they just went through and added the vocal on it. Lightning clouds that touch your skin. Thunder doesn't end until it begins. Tried and true. I just want to be a phase you're going through. There's these real cool guitars right here. It's kind of bouncing left and right. This great bass line. Just kind of at the end, just keeps it grooving. We just had a bunch of little guitars just kind of doing this, this detune thing. Just kind of making it a little more haunting through. It's kind of underneath everything. So to kind of give this track space to not just have just the guitar, there's still things that are very, very buried in the mix just to show depth. Like that's not our main, like right there is just a fade up guitar. It's not doing anything but just swelling underneath. And it just kind of creates depth. You know, if you just have one thing, you know, you want to cut as many things away as you can, but if you can add a little bit of depth of something that's far in the back as well, that really kind of adds to it. And also this whole intro to kind of create spaciness, uh, you know, a little more of a depth, it's not in time. Just kind of slows down a little at the end and then picks up. Especially in moments like this. When we're old, we'll see these days. And then just for like those three hits, we've got two other guitars kind of playing that with it. Just super light, just to show that it's building just a little bit before we hit everybody else. Yeah, but that's, that guitar is really tucked down in, in the land of living mysterious And it all kind of opens up. But it's still not as big as all the guitars happening like towards the outro. You hear that jump that happens. So, and kind of creating the space for the lyrics to sit in on this one are, are super important. The lyrics, you kind of have the juxtaposition of the song being mysterious ways. It's not very mysterious what it's talking about at all. How do you explain to yourself doing whatever it is you want to do or how you feel like at a moment? And it's basically saying when we're older, we'll just chalk it up to mysterious ways. So yeah, that's the great thing about this one. It was totally quarantine made. Uh, thrown together with just three guys getting what they could get out of their home studios. And, and I think, I mean, I think, uh, I think Brock and uh, Joe really, really nailed it. So I, I love the way this track turned out.